So people are generally terrified of reptiles. And I happen to believe that maybe that is taught. So today I've got some young campers here and we're gonna teach them how to not be afraid of reptiles. Now folks, they've often said in show business you're not supposed to work with kids or animals. Well, I'm breaking both rules, so today anything can happen because these guys are gonna be the toughest critics out there. Let's see if we can learn them something. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on? My man Joey here just noticed that the shell of the tortoise, this is a tortoise, because this lives on land, right? Do you know the difference? Turtles live in water, tortoise lives on land. Uh, turtle's not a tortoise, it's not hard to understand. Joey yeah, put a, a, a pool just in case they wanna go in the water, right? That's right, they can soak and drink in their pool. So hey, so we're hanging out here with the Galapagos tortoises and they're on their way over. We're gonna keep everyone on this side right now. Um, and what's funny is when you're their size, sometimes these tortoises can be quite intimidating. I mean, Darwin's 350 pounds and Socrates is a bit of a lunatic when it comes to eating cactus. So what we're gonna do is give you a cactus. Ladies first, you hold on, just give him a feed. See if he'll bite, oh, look at that. So that's fantastic, see? And it's just an animal like any other animal, except it has no hair. What's that, bud? I, I don't know why they eat something with spikes. Well, actually, these cactus don't have a lot of spikes on them. So that's why it's okay. But I like the way you're holding it. So anyhow, with kids, they are naturally curious. And I happen to believe that if you give them an opportunity to learn and don't teach them to fear animals but to respect them. Now, hey, Lynn, what's happening to the cactus? It's getting kind of short, right? Right. Now, this tortoise doesn't want to bite you. This tortoise is just trying to get the cactus, so we have to teach you when to let go, right? When do you think you should let go of this cactus? Um, uh, when he almost um, bites me. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's see how brave you are. It's getting closer. Oh boy, how much more? Okay, that's good. <laughs> and now, there's absolutely no chance of you getting bit because his attention's turning. That this is, he looks like a turtle monster. He right? looks like a turtle monster? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because it's a very large tortoise. Do you want to feed this tortoise? Yeah. Because it's your turn. Come on over here, Joey. Anyways, and I promise we're going to get the bigger kids. They're my pals. They've are, done this stuff before. So what's up, Joe? He already had some feeding, so that's why Okay, so let's see if you can do it, Joey. Now, Joey seems to be pretty brave as well. Whoa, now she's got a bigger mouth. This is actually a girl. Oh. So it's really neat, man. Tortoises are always uh, yeah. the first animal I like to introduce kids that haven't had a lot of interaction with reptiles. And I'm gonna keep an eye as I talk because Joey seems pretty brave and that's always a fun little game I have is to see who can hold on to the cactus the longest. Hold on, I don't want to lose attention. Keep going, Joe. Stick it out a little bit more. Let's make it easy for Darwin to get it. There you go. Wow, that's a big bite. That's a big bite. She's got a big mouth. Wow. And you gotta hold it. You're doing a good Look, job. Please getting short enough to bite me. Yeah. No, a little bit more. Let's see. What how about maybe one more bite? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. And then we drop it on the floor. Okay. Ooh, good job. <laughs> see, I like to have this game. Who can hold on the longest? See, I don't mind if I get bit. But we don't want screaming children and we're trying to tell them not to be afraid of reptiles. Good job, guys. You know, I'm never afraid of what, an animal. No? Not even <laughs> one kind of one. Well, that's fantastic. See that? So we're off to a good start. And like I was saying, I like to introduce kids to the tortoises because at the end of the day, tortoises are slow. If you can't run away from a tortoise, you have bigger problems, right? <laughs> I never knew they were free until I saw that. Oh, time. yeah, that's Nostradamus. That's probably the friendliest one. So what we'll do now is I'm going to take these extra cactus and toss one over here for my buddy Nostradamus and then why don't we go somewhere else and visit with some other animals. What he do you gets think? extra, okay. right? Oh yeah, it gets extra. Yeah. Hey, you ready to go, Joe? Yeah, Let's go see some more. He gets extra. Well, he's like... 
All right, so I need everybody to listen because we're gonna go inside the lizard cage here at Camp Kennan. And we have to go through Slinky's house to get to Senor Guapo, whom we're gonna meet next. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is you have to pay attention to me because the lizards are bigger, okay? But they're friendly. So we're gonna not mess with Slinky, and this is something for you folks at home. Uh, you know, water monitors, they're a big animal. Uh, they have sharp teeth, and this, this animal is very good, but even still, you have to know your audience and you have to know what's safe and what's not, so we don't want to do anything that could potentially damage the children, all right? So we have to use our heads. But anyway, we're going to go in and we're going to move on over to Senor Guapo, and I want you all to follow me and pay attention, okay? Here we go. Good job. By the way, Tom's going to hit his head. I'm really actually more impressed with how Tom's behaving right now because if you watch, uh, if you guys go back and watch him freak out, it's uh, because he's uh -huh. looking. Go ahead, right over here, guys. You stand right in there, walk right there. Good girl. You watch for the tail, thank you very much. You, young sir, go this way. Same thing, you know about all about monitor lizards, don't you there, bud? All right, Slinky, I'm just gonna sneak on by the Slinkster. And we're going to go on with Senior Guapo. So, okay, everyone, these lizards are very friendly. But what we're going to do is we're not going to put our hands near their faces. You're going to listen to me and let me tell you when it's okay to touch the reptiles. All right? All right. Here we go. Come on in. You stand right over here. There you go. So here's what's interesting, guys, is, you know, the tortoises kind of always been a benign animal unless you're dealing with a snapping turtle. So kids are generally more friendly or more open to that, but they change a little bit when you get them around larger lizards. Um, are you guys nervous at all? No. No? No. These are brave children. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so we're hanging out with Lola and Senior Guapo, and many of my viewers know all about these lizards because they're extremely friendly. So I'm going to teach you how to meet and say hello to them. Here comes Guapo right now. You want to come up on my shoulder, buddy? Wants to try and learn how to pet one of these lizards. What do you think? Yeah. Who wants to go first? All right, Janet, come on over here. So with any animal, yeah. you got to make sure you don't go right for the head, right? You want to start back here and start petting them. So come on over here. You stand right here. Come on over here. That's Guapo. <laughs> You see him, let him see yeah. it. Now just relax, uh -huh. all right? Because you, your body language is telling me you're a little bit apprehensive, just mm -hmm. a little. All right, so listen, yeah. both of us together, you just want to gently touch him right like this so he feels you, and look what he does. He just raises up. He's showing you that it's okay, but you never want to go right for an animal's head. Uh -huh. You always scratch on the back, and you never, ever, ever try this with a wild animal or an animal that the owner of the animal tells you not to touch because some are friendly and some are not. And right now, Lola looks like she wants to investigate the guys. Hey, Joey, you look like you're a little nervous. Are you okay? What's he doing? She, he's, she is coming over to say hello to you. <laughs> what do you think? Do you want to say hello back? He's getting too close. Well, you keep calling <laughs> it a he and it's actually a she. So she's getting too close. What are you afraid of? I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of a big animal, and it, let's let's do this. I'm gonna pick her up. Okay. It's just that she's too spiky. You think she's too spiky? Come here. I want to show you something. Yeah. You stand right here, and just relax. Everything's okay. I won't let anything happen to you or hurt you. So, and this is you know usually what happens is uh, the animals get inquisitive they want to see what's going on and everyone's brave until the animals start walking towards you but it's so important for us to get over these fears of these type of animals so that we can all appreciate them and love them and that's what i'm doing here today you want to love animals right yeah yeah you want to protect them so let's let's take your hand you and i together all right both of us together we're going to touch back here feel this isn't that amazing yeah it's dry now let's feel the spikies the spikies won't hurt the spikies won't hurt it's okay joe Don't look check it out it. you can feel them that's just like their, that's their little hang. See that? I, Did that hurt? I, I thought they were going to hurt. Yeah, you thought they were going to hurt. It looks like Guapo surprised Tom. He thought they were going to hurt, but they didn't. Do you want to touch them again? Show everyone you're not scared anymore. Yeah. See that? So these, you want to try Lynn? Go ahead, sweetie. Just nice and gentle. She actually likes it. You see her close her eyes? She likes it. It's like when mommy plays with your hair and gives you a head rub, you start falling asleep. Same thing, you can touch them and look. Can I touch it all? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, She's being anyways, very good. I have to wait to, uh, to, I have to uh, sit on 
her wait, uh, uh, waiting for her. Uh, come in. It's a good story. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> okay, well that was fantastic. I love that story. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be some way to put subtitles underneath that, that story because I don't know what he just said. But it must have been a really engaging story. But you can kind of see how incredible uh, these animals are. And the other fun thing that's neat and most people don't realize is that reptiles are actually and can be intelligent animals and you can see the inquisitiveness of these iguanas and they want to see what's going on in their environment these two in particular are very 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 uh, good animals that i trust um, that being said we must be realistic because anything with a mouth what can it do with its mouth it can bite that's right so we want to always have respect for the animal you want to touch its spikes yeah. Go ahead. I think you guys are doing very good with these animals. And also, these are very friendly animals, huh? So this is Lola, and this is Senor Guapo. Do you know what Senor Guapo means in Spanish? Oh, no. You do? Handsome. It means Mr. Handsome. That's I remember right. that. All right, what do you think? Do you want to go see some more animals? Yeah. yeah sure. All right. Let's well, do let's it. go do it. Turtles, lizards, and finally we're going to talk about some snakes today. Now, no other animal in the reptile world scares people more than snakes. Mm -hmm. Jana here is a little afraid of snakes, aren't you? But, yeah, a little, but I've held them before. You've held them before. Okay, so thanks for the honesty. Now, Joey gets up real close. So the first thing, Joey, you don't want to ever put yourself way close to an animal that you don't know, right? So you want to give the animal some distance and wait for my instruction before you touch it or start to handle the snake. And it's just the way it's got to be, guys, because like I said, if it has a mouth, it can bite. And as we know, us reptile lovers, if this animal gets frightened, they don't talk or bark or say things to us. They'll either hiss or they'll open their mouth or they'll strike at us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have one child at a time come over. Who wants to be first to pet the snake? I do. All right, ladies first. All right, come on, Lynn. So what did we learn? We never want to go by the head, right? Yeah. You want to start touching back behind the head. There you go. Let's see. What does it feel like? Um. Does it feel slimy? No. Feel smooth? Yeah. Does it feel cool? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because this is a snake. It's got no hair. They're not slimy. They're not evil animals. They're just animals trying to live just like us. We're trying to live too, aren't we? So right now, you see the snake is very interested in what's going on. It's flicking its tongue out. Yeah. It's tasting the air, just trying to see if you're dangerous. And I don't think you're dangerous, are you? Nah. nah. <laughs> you're a superhero, man. This guy's got Batman shoes and a Spider-Man t-shirt, so he's going to be a hero for animals, I think. He's a long snake. He is a long snake. Hey, no, wow. did you capture all these animals? No, that's a good question, Joey. This animal actually came to me from the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. It's a California king snake, and this animal can be found in the deserts of California and different areas out there, and it feeds primarily on rodents and other snakes. That's why they call it a king snake. This snake actually will sometimes eat venomous snakes, which could harm human beings or make them sick if they bite them. So this is a good animal here. It's a good type of snake. There's all even the venomous snakes are actually pretty good too because they save us from rodents and things that would actually hurt us if they were to get in our homes. So snakes are actually good animals. So we're doing good with this snake. What do you say we get Janet to hold the snake? Okay. I want you to hold this without me. Well, hold on one second, Lynn. We got to let your cousin hold the snake. Now you're just going to be relaxed. And here's okay. the other thing, guys. You never want to give a snake to someone who is completely bat crap crazy against snakes, okay? I don't like to do that. It's not good for the person. They're not going to get over a phobia. It's not good for the animal also because it could stress the animal out. But you see this animal's very calm, right? Yeah. So you need to be calm too. Okay. So just let the snake come to you. Will it just be okay? It'll me? just be okay, I promise. This is a really nice snake. Okay. He's just going to hang out. You just relax. You have to match the animal's temperament. That animal's very calm, so I want you to be calm. And this is how you would get people over their fear of snakes. Now, obviously, if Janet had a really, really strong phobia, we wouldn't be doing this quite so quickly. Janet is definitely a little nervous, you can see, right? You're a little yeah, nervous, right? Yeah, but I'm getting used You're to getting it. You're getting used to it, right? What is um, it about snakes that scares you? 
Well, I don't know really. It's hard to say exactly. It's hard to say? Is your mom afraid of snakes? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think maybe you saw your mom's reaction one day maybe. and maybe that's why you're afraid of snakes too? Maybe other people's reactions. How you feeling? You feeling comfortable with that? He's just yeah. flicking his tongue. He wants to find another place to hold on to so you don't have to relax. I want you to relax. Take a deep breath. Okay. Just relax. Enjoy the fact that you're communing with nature, child. Yep. Here we are hanging out. <laughs> Snake's not doing anything bad, but I'll tell you what, we have one final animal I want to bring out and I want to get the kids used to this animal as well. So I'm going to bring back the California King and the next time you see me, we're going to have another snake, okay? okay. Alright guys, hang tight, I'll be right back. This one requires a little lifting. Okay guys, so we've gone from the little California King snake to a 13 foot albino berm who is extremely heavy. This is Princess Buttercup. Let's see what the kids think of Buttercup. Let, let's adjust for light. Okay, let's go guys. This is a true test. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Now, the other thing I'm gonna wanna do is scare my cat away because I don't wanna accidentally have a meal of a cat in front of these kids. That'd be traumatic, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. All right, guys and girls, come on over and meet Princess Buttercup. Princess Buttercup. That's yeah. A good name. Isn't that a good name? Yeah. It's pretty good. What do you think, Jan? You want to hold this snake? Maybe. I don't. I don't, think... I, I don't know. Maybe can I? This thing. Uh, you may pet it. it oh, let's actually let the snake down. It's... You guys, do me a favor, okay? Because uh, when the snake goes on the ground, we're gonna appear much larger than the snake. So I want you guys to actually back up a little bit. And right now this snake is just holding on to me so tightly. Oh goodness, let's get it down on the ground. It looks like he was attacking you. It wasn't attacking me. He was just trying to hold on. I was just saying it looked like that, right? It did look like that. Very good. But that's what scares people is they think that the constrictor is actually attacking me when in fact snakes don't have legs. So the snake's actually just afraid of falling. So he's just tightening up so that he doesn't fall because this snake lives on the ground and wants to be close to the ground so he doesn't hurt himself by falling. So this is Buttercup. Now Buttercup was a snake that I took in and I have a special permit to keep this snake because the owner could no longer care for it and you have to have a special permit here in Florida to own these. So who wants to be the first to touch this extremely big and beautiful snake? I do. I love it. Lynn, come on over on this side. Come on over here, sweetie. So we touched the we touched the California king snake. How should you touch the snake? Um, the same way. The same way. Look at this. And this young one has little to no fear. And I think it's fantastic to teach kids how to respect these animals. But you have to do it properly. I get annoyed when I see people with snakes thrust them and try and frighten people, because the fact is, as reptile lovers, we actually want more people to love these animals. So many times you get people with reptiles and they like to feel different or feel like they're part of an exclusive crowd and I understand that but in reality guys it's up to all of us to get these animals appreciated by the mainstream and you do that by being respectful to the animal respectful to the people that are you're teaching and the other thing that I think is so important what do you think about this here's something that really uh, is something that we as a reptile community need to work on and that is sharing information without making people feel silly for answering the, asking the question. Very, very important. When I was first starting out, there were so many people who, because they had knowledge that I didn't have, they were greedy with that knowledge or made me feel silly for not knowing. So that's what we try and do. We try and share information, right? Yep. Yeah. That's it. Well, guys, I think we've done a good job. I think Jan has done good. Mm -hmm. Teach, are you afraid of anything? No. This guy came with me filming Komodo dragons and was pretty darn brave. However, he was the first kid out of the area when that dragon came running. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get moving, guys. We're gonna let the kids enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Camp Kennan. And if I'm not quick, that tortoise right there, go ahead, look. Whoa. Is gonna nibble on my snake because it thinks it's a banana. Uh -oh. So we're out of here, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday on another episode of Camp Kennan. So long. A big banana. A big banana. The turtle thinks he's a big banana, right? Banana. Banana. He thinks he's a big banana.
<laughs> Bananas are white.